Uh, I am currently a postdoctoral researcher in the uh, Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences at the University of Illinois at Chicago. I am a postdoc and part of a Bridge to Faculty program. Um, so I'm a little bit of a different type of postdoc. I will be hopefully converting to an assistant professor in a couple of years. And I just started this job uh, about a month ago in August of 2021. So I'm quite new to this job. Um, so what I do day to day is pretty much just research. <laughs> uh, I don't really have a lot of meetings at this moment in time. Uh, and so what research looks like for me is just coming to my computer and writing a lot of code. Um, and then writing up that code and also reading uh, scientific literature. I don't work a regular schedule. <laughs> I think uh, it's pretty subjective. I think, you know, some people like a regular set schedule and some people don't. And I, I don't prefer a regular schedule. I tend to work in, in sort of um, bursts. So I'd say I probably average between 40 and 50 hours a week, but I don't do nine to five. I just sort of, you know, I wake up, I don't set an alarm, I go exercise and then I come in. So, um, so as I said, I'm a seismologist. Uh, generally, that means uh, people study earthquakes is, is sort of a common um, application of seismology. I do study earthquakes. So I'm really interested in forensic seismology, uh, which is the um, sort of trying to figure out where seismic events came from. And my specific focus is how do we dis like distinguish between an earthquake and an underground nuclear explosion for um, treaty monitoring. So right now there's this, this global treaty that many countries have signed that says nobody will test underground nuclear weapons, but we're sort of unsure as of now how to tell the difference if they're really small nuclear weapons. Um, and so that's the focus of my research. Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I took out student loans uh, and I took out a lot of student loans to where they not only paid my tuition, but they also paid my rent and, and sort of my day to day. I also held at one point, I held four jobs at one time during undergraduate <laughs> studies, um, and it was difficult, I would say. I think in terms of how financially attainable the degree is, it depends on where you're attending school and, and things like that. But in terms of um, a career in geoscience, I think it just depends what your goals are. If your goals are to make a ton of money and get really, really wealthy, I don't think geoscience <laughs> is that path. I mean, you might be able to go into the uh, energy industry and, and make a ton of money, but um, it's definitely, I would say, a passion field for sure. You, you know, you can still make good money. It's just not, you're not going to be like a, a Wall Street person, <laughs> let's say. So my, my work actually requires no training or certifications. Um, because I typically just code at a computer all day. Um, so I would say in terms of skills, it's programming, it's computer programming and, and knowledge of that. Um, but I don't go out into the field a lot, so I do not <laughs> require that. I've never traveled outside of the United States uh, for a conference or anything. Um, so yeah, I would say my particular field is pretty accessible. And I... I feel financially stable, but I would add the caveat that I am married and, and live in a dual income household. Um, and as somebody who grew up in a single income household, it, it's quite a bit of a difference. And I think that um, this career path, as I was saying earlier, is not the most lucrative career path that you could take. And it really is a passion career path. But I think going through graduate school, any prospective grad student should be aware that you are not getting paid a lot of money. Um, and, and depending on where you are going, um, 
that could have an impact. And also many graduate departments don't allow their graduate students to hold outside jobs. Um, and so that can get difficult as well. And so if you are, I would recommend if you're interviewing with a, um, a grad school, ask the students if their wage is livable, for sure. I was lucky enough, I didn't know to ask that. And every institution I had attended had a livable wage, but um, I know colleagues and friends of mine were not so lucky. Technology, but um, what's been happening lately is the rise of data science, right? And a lot of the skills that you learn in geophysics are transferable to that field. Um, and that is a huge opportunity for growth because uh, data science positions are quite well paid. Uh, within geosciences, I would say there are many options. You could work at a national lab and you can move up through management. You could uh, work in academia, which is the path that I've chosen. You know, you could choose to stay a professor. You could move on to a dean and perhaps even higher. Um, so I would really say there are a lot of opportunities for growth. I think sometimes depending on what you want, you'll need to get creative. Um, but certainly in geophysics, a lot of the skills are transferable and it's very, um, I'd say useful. <laughs> I think, um, you know, I'm speaking as, as a, a gender minority, as a racial minority and also like socioeconomic, uh, you know, I, I, I um, I would say I've encountered a lot of barriers. Um, probably the biggest one that I've encountered in geophysics or seismology is just um, not being around much diversity. And that particularly impacted me during my PhD when I think the sense of community mattered the most, you know, for resilience and, and um, you know, to keep going, because getting a PhD is quite a difficult thing to do. And I think a lot of people were able to find community um, and I struggled to find my community. Um, I would say there's also uh, a lot of um, outdoorsiness in the geosciences, right? Um, I'm a nerd, you know, I like to sit inside and I like to code and I like to read books and do puzzles and bake and um, and that was also a little bit I would say difficult to navigate. Um, I do like going outside but I don't it, if I were to go for a hike I would choose to go for you know maybe an hour as opposed to 14 hours <laughs> right and and um, sometimes it was a little difficult finding like-minded people in geosciences. Yeah, I would, um, I would actually, I would share a story um, during my undergraduate when, when we took a field trip to um, West Texas. And it, this was very rural West Texas and there were only three of us uh, oh, students no. of color and we were all black. Um, and our professor actually, he let us stay in the van. We pulled into a parking lot and there were many cars with Confederate flags on them. And we did not want to get out at all. And, and our professor let us, he let us stay in the van. He told the other students to get us our snacks that we needed. Um, and I would say that that was an example of a challenge right this the sort of fear of of being in a space that i am not welcome but also it was i think an example of how the professor was an ally in that situation right he didn't force us to be uncomfortable he didn't allow the students to force us to be uncomfortable either study math get get on get on math uh, try teaching yourself coding uh, there's a lot of online resources these days that really are really great. YouTube is a really good resource. Um, I started learning Python by going to Python's website <laughs> and just going through their tutorial. Um, so I would definitely say coding and I would say math and, and physics, you know, just keep on top of these really technical uh, 
fields because they really are important to seismology. So I've had many mentors. I wouldn't say that I um, ever sought out a mentor. I think there are many people in seismology and even the broader geoscience discipline that want to mentor, that offer mentorship. Um, so my, um, who ended up becoming my master's advisor, she was my mentor as an undergraduate. Um, and she helped me navigate a lot. And, you know, and, and there were others in the department as well. And then for, how do I say this? I'm lucky enough that both of my advisors for graduate school were, were also mentors. We had a good relationship. They invested in me. They um, helped me uh, get to where I am today. I would also say I did a lot of um, extracurricular activities. So for instance, I joined one of our professional societies uh, task force for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And on there, I met several mentors, right? And they just reached out. They, they said, oh, you know, you're our only student member on this task force. And if you need any career guidance, if you have any questions, and I took them up on it. And so that's, if I had to offer advice, I would say if anybody is reaching out, even if they're not saying, I want to be your mentor, if they're just saying, you know, maybe it's a professor in class who says, feel free to come to office hours, go to office hours, um, just take those little opportunities because they end up being really big opportunities. And that's something I've, I've sort of learned, <laughs> you know, I don't, um, I feel like a lot of what I've done is not really intentional so much as take like seizing opportunities, seeing them not, maybe I didn't always recognize it for what it was, um, just saying, yes, I'll go to office hours or yes, I will be the undergraduate that you need to do research, <laughs> you know, and then I just wound up here. So definitely, take advantage of, of those little things because academics, scientists, we want to help you. You know, we want to volunteer our time and we want to help the next generation of scientists. Mm -hmm.